Hello, everybody. Kim here. Um, today's discussion will be on the Nine Fruits of the Spirit. Uh, here's the book which I'll post by Robert Stratton. Um, basically, we're going to overview the book. Um, you can take your own time in reading the book. Um, I found it very enlightening, actually, for one of the many Fruits of the Spirit. So, the Nine Fruits of the Spirit are discussions on patience. So, what is patience? It's in the Greek, it's mekarothium, which means forbearance, forbearance, long enduring, fortitude, long suffering, and patience. Okay. Um, now that the, now we're going to discuss the fruits of the spirit is dot 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 patience. God is patiently waiting for us to do something. Patience long before we even ask for it. God does not have to try to be patient. He is patient. Be thankful that God is patiently patient with us through our ups and downs. Many people make jokes about patience, that it is to be a patient person, but really we're not patient people. Uh, we're God's creation, true, and we fell from grace through Adam and Eve. And with that, we don't have the patience like God does to wait upon the Lord. Um, patience is something we continually keep working on. It is still being developed in our heart inside. In other words, he's constantly instructing us and teaching us on these things. We are all learners, travelers, and we are still needing to be more learned on patience. How do we develop this fruit, patience? And harvest it also. That will be discussed. And then the benefits of the developing patients are more rewarding than the process, processes and pain of not doing it. Now, here's the questions we need to ask ourselves. Developing the fruit, of pa fruit called patience. What does a person develop or when does a person develop patience? At the point of new birth? How long does it take to cultivate this fruit to maturity? What does it take to make the process happen? So our first question, what does a person, when does a person develop patience? This special application of this quality of most often exhibited in our dealings with other people from our heart to them is basically dealt with relationships. There's a negative side to it, and this negative side can call can poison relationships. It can shorten tempers, cause even shorten the relationship, cause anger, and eventually relationships are destroyed if there's negativity. Now, at what point is it at the new birth? Dealing with patience, one must acknowledge it is the little things that seem to drive us. Okay, we must see ex how exclusive patience can become. It has the power to destroy any vestige of patience. This can cause that can cause cultivation. Um, it could be in long suffering, not waiting, or just the endurance coming to the end and rushing it. We can look at Colossians 1 10 and 11, and here's what it states so that you may live lives worthy of the Lord and entirely pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work and multiplying in the fullness of knowledge of God. We pray that you will continually strengthen with all the power that comes from his glories, glorious might, so that you will be able to preserve and be patient in any situation joyfully. So here, the basic thing that he was stressing was prayer is the most important thing to keep your patience. Making tasks equal, looking for the miracles in life, seeking God's grace in all things. These are the keys in that verse that are described for us as a believer, Christian or Jew, that need to be addressed before we can even move any further in cultivating this life-giving fruit. The relationship between patience and forgiveness go hand in hand. Making patience important in a relationship 
but also a good relationship must have forgiveness and mercy. Looking at Matthew 18, 21 through 35, we see this. When Peter came up and said to him, Rabbi, how often can my brother sin against me and I have forgiven him as many as seven times? Not, no, not seven times, answers Jesus, but 70 times seven. Because of this, the kingdom of heaven may be compared with the king who decided to settle an account with his deputies. Right away, they brought forward a man who owed him many millions. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him and his wife and his children to sell all their possessions to be sold to pay for the debt. But the servant fell down before him, being patient with him. He begged him, I will pay you back everything. So out of the pity of his... Um, for him, the master let him go and forgive him of the debts. And again, the servant asked the master to be patient with him in taking care of the debt. Now, this is a higher level servant. And the servant was very neglectful in that respect to his fellow servant. But as that servant was leaving, he came upon his fellow servant who owed him some tiny sum, very little compared to the millions. He grabbed him and began to choke him violently, crying, pay back what you owe me, demanding it. Being pat be patient with me and I will pay you back everything. The servant was begging him. His fellow servant fell before him begging. And it says, be patient with me and I will pay you back everything. But the higher level servant refused. Instead, he had him thrown in jail until he repaid the debt. He wasn't very forgiving. And he didn't have any mercy on his fellow man. When the other servants saw when the other servants saw this, what happened? They were extremely distressed and they wanted they went they want went and told their master everything that had ha had taken place. When the when they did this they summoned the master and told him everything that was going on, everything that was being done to this lower-level servant or lower-level person, and they reported it to him. Then the master summoned his servant and said, You wicked servant. Sound familiar? I forgive you all the debt just because you begged me to do it. Shouldn't you have had pity on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And in anger, the master turned him over to the jailer for punishment until he had paid back everything he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat you unless you forgive your brother for, from your heart. So what he was saying is this servant didn't forgive his fellow brother. And therefore, God will do the same in the exact same manner he will do to that one servant by sending him to hell. Okay, let's go on. Do, 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 do. Now, patience in action. We must have we must have to wait for a time in our walk before we make progress in God. We must have patience in Him in waiting. In this, we must not be passive. We must be robust, vigorous, and build up the facts facts of God. Build up on the facts of God. God is patient as well as being loved, being loving. In James 1, 12 through 27, we see, Happy is the one who endures testing, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to those who loved him. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each one is tempted when he is dragged away and enticed by his own desires. Then when the desires has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when it fully grows, it brings forth death. So, 
When we say God tempts us, that's not the case. It's the devil that tempts us. But if we fall into that temptation and it develops in our heart as a seed, then we reap what we sow. Do not be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadows. In other words, he doesn't go into shifty shadows to do anything. By his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, so that we might be kind, a kind of first fruits. Mm -mm. of all he created knowing this my dear brothers and sisters let every person be quick quick to listen slow to speak and slow to anger in other words he's referring to patience again we must be patient hear quickly slow to speak slow to anger in other words don't let don't get impatient be patient upon him for Human anger doesn't produce the righteousness of God. So put away all filth and excess of evil and receive the humility that implanted word, which is able to save your soul. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, dulging, deluding yourselves. For in anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror for once he looks at himself and goes away he immediately forgets what sort of person he was but the one who looks intently into the perfect torah and the torah that gives freedom and continues in it not becoming a hearer who forgets but a doer who acts he shall be blessed in what he does. So here he's saying, if we follow the commandments that God has set before us, love, honor, cherish, obey, um, love one another, have patience with one another, forgive one another, then we are following what he wants. Uh, if anyone thinks he is religious and yet do not bridle his tongue, in other words, hold his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religious religion is futile. So in other words, if the person doesn't keep his mouth shut, don't gossip about other people, don't talk, don't start rumors, don't do any of that, and don't deceive your heart in thinking what you're doing is right, then we are living righteously. Otherwise, if we do it and think we're living righteously, it's futile, pretty much. Pure and undefiled religion before our God and our Father is this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So we must take care of the less fortunate and also we must keep ourselves from worldly desires. Even though we're human and we still sin, and if we do do that, we ask for forgiveness. That covers our sins through Christ. Now, patience has some rules for holy living. Patience is a guardian of faith. It preserve, is a preserver of peace, cherishes of love, teaches of humility, governs flesh, strengthens the spirit, sweetens the temper, stifles the anger, extinguishes envy, subdues pride. Bridles the tongue, restrains the hands, tramples the temptation, endures the persecution, and consummates martyrdom. Patience produces unity, loyalty, harmony, comfort, moderates, humbles, happiness, teaches forgiveness, and faithfulness to God. These are the rules of the holy living. In Colossians 3, 1-17, through 17, we can see, Therefore, if you have been raised up, with the Messiah, keep seeking the things above where Messiah is, sits at the right hand of God, focus your mind on things above, not things on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with the Messiah in God. When Messiah, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with the with him 
in glory. Therefore, put to death what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurities, lust, evil desires, and greed, for that is adultery. Because of such things, God's wrath is coming upon the sons of disobedience. At one time you also walked in these ways, when you used to live in these ways. But now set them all aside, anger, rage, malice, slander, and foul language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. After all, you have taken the old self with its practices and have put on the new self that is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. Here there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, savage, slave, and or free. The Messiah is all, is, is all and all in one. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves in tender compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, just as the Lord pardoned you, so you also must pardon one another. But above all, these things put on love, which is the bond of perfect harmony. Let the shalom of the Messiah rule in your hearts, and to the shalom you were surely called in one body. Also be thankful. Let the words of the Messiah dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another with all the wisdom in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with gratitude in your hearts of God. And whatever you do in, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Yeshua. Give thanks to God the Father through him. So we see in this that we are to honor God in everything we do, but be patient, be humble, forgive one another, and do the things that are listed here as accordingly. Be humble, compassionate, kind, gentleness, and have patience. These are the fruits. Patience, suffering, and preservation. Waiting. Can be a serious situation like in guidance, marriage, life situations, careers, and serious illness. If we do not wait upon God to give our answers to any situation, it can cause trouble. Very much trouble. <clears throat> In Psalms 40, 1 through 7, we see, For the music directed as the Psalms of David, I wait patiently for Adonai. He bent down to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the slimy, slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. Then he set, set my feet on a rock. He made my steps firm. He put a new song in my mouth. Many will see and fear and trust in Adonai. Blessed is the one who puts his confidence in Adonai, who has not turned to the arrogant, nor to those who fell in falsehood. Many things you have done, Adonai, my God. You plan for us. Your plans for us are wonderful. There is none to be compared to you. If I were to speak and tell them, they would be too many to count. Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. So in here he's saying that the burnt offerings, the sacrifices and that are not required for the Lord to bless us. As long as we believe in his son and, and wait patiently on him for answers, then we will be blessed. In James 5, 7 through 12, we also see, So be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the... Precise, precise fruits of the earth, being patient for it until it receives the early and latter rains. So in here we see that there's going to be the patience of the fruit. You have an early rain, and you have a latter rain of the Spirit. You also will be patient, strengthen your hearts because the coming of the Lord is near. Do not grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the name, the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider blessing those who should endure. endure. You have heard of the endure, enduring of Job, 
you have seen the outcomes of Adonai. The Adonai is full of compassion and mercy. But above all, my dear brothers and sisters, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by other oaths, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under judgment. So he, he's saying, don't make oaths. Don't swear on your heart. Don't swear on God. Don't swear down here. Don't make a promise here. Don't make a promise there. Yes be yes and no be no. Also he is saying that we are to endure until the coming of Christ. Before the, the first reigns and the last reigns. Also we're not to grumble against one another. We're not to complain. Otherwise judgment will be poured upon us. So patience unto the very end. Patience makes a believer wait to endure. Must be long-suffering for the believer. One must wait on the Lord. Second Peter 3, 1-15 states, Loved ones, this is now the second letter I have that I, that I am writing you. In both, in both, I am trying to stir you up by way of the reminder to hold some thinking, to remember the words preciously proclaimed by the holy prophets and the commandments of our Lord and Savior through your emissaries. First of all, understand that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing, following after their own desires, and will say, where is this promise of his coming? Ever since the fathers died, everything goes on just as it has from the beginning of creation. For in holding to this idea, it escapes their notice that heaven exists long ago and that the earth was formed out of the waters and that through waters by, and through waters by the word of God, through these, the word of the times was destroyed by being flooded with water. But by the same word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept, kept until the, the day of judgment and the disaster of the ungodly people. But don't forget this one thing, loved ones, that with the Lord, one day is, a th is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some consider slowness, Rather, rather, he is being patient towards you, not waiting anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But that day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will pass away with a roar. And the elements will melt and disintegrate, and the earth and everything done on it shall be exposed since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people should you be? Live your lives in holiness and godliness. Look for and hasten the coming of the day of, the, of God. In that day the heavens will be dissolved by fire, and the elements will melt in the intense heat. But in keeping with his promise, we look for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness dwells. Therefore, loved ones, while you are looking for this, these things, make every effort to be found in shalom, spotless and blameless before him. Bear in mind that, that the patience of our Lord means salvation. Just as our dearly, dearly loved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom given to him. So here he sa he's, he's talking about us waiting upon the appearance of the Lord and that the second coming there will be destruction. There will be nothing left once we're gone from here. Matthew 10, 22 states, And you will be hated by all because of my name's sake. But to one who endures to the end shall be saved. In Romans 8, 18, 25, For I consider the suffering of this present time not worthy to be compared with the coming glory to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly awaits the revelation of the Son of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of the one who subjected it 
in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from bondage by decay into the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans together and suffers birth pains until now. And now only creation, but even ourselves, we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Ruach, groan inwardly as we eagerly await for the adoption, the redemption of our blood bodies, for in hope we were saved. But hope that is in is seen is not hope. Who would hope for what we see? But if we hope for what we do not see, then we eagerly wait for it with per, per, um, perseverance. So in summary, patience, one of life's hardest lessons to learn. We must be quiet, still, and listen. That's what God demands. Be patient without interpretation. Be at peace in patience. Wait upon the Lord's will. Patience is not instant. Rest on patience. Rely on patience, in other words. So that concludes our study of patience. So the two books, <clears throat> give me one second here. The two books we went over, section A was love, section two was patience. So these are the first two books we discussed uh, this week. Um, both of them are vital. Love is more important than patience, but you can't have patience without love. You can't have love without patience. And with that, you got to have forgiveness. So we've picked up on both books. Love has to have forgiveness and patience has to have forgiveness. Otherwise, you won't be able to start producing the first fruits of your life in the Spirit of Christ. So we'll end this discussion. We'll end it with a prayer. And hopefully the next two discussions, we I'll have it in one video. Um, I'll have it short fied. And as far as your books and the notes, I'll have them ready to go. And you can get them down in the comment section and download them there. I'll have them uh, PDFs so you can look at it yourself and read the book individually. Um, I just did an overview, so that overview, there, there's a lot of material, so I had to divide this material into smaller units, so that's why there was two videos done. So let's now pray. Abba Father, dearest Master of Heaven and Universe, I pray that many blessings be on my brothers and sisters in Christ and that this portion of our study blesses them um, and enriches their lives. I pray that peace be upon them and blessings through this series and I hope that I can learn something as much as they can and I pray that if there be anybody out there sick or ill that you will touch them in some way, Master. I'm not perfect and neither are they. And as I go along, I'm learning just as much as they are. And I'm learning how to run my life as much as they are learning how through this. I pray peace on where I live at in the United States and our government. And then I also pray a shalom for Jerusalem and Israel. In the name of our precious Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, Amen. And I'll